Hello there, welcome to Inquiry Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review of these three Bennu fountain pens. This is going to be a threefer, three reviews in one video. That's because these three Bennu fountain pens are on loan from pen friend Janice Butterworth for review. I've been watching Bennu pens for a while now. The closest I've come to pulling the trigger on one was when they moved up to the number six size nibs on some models. I've held back because I'm not sure I'm down with the whole sparkly, glitzy, mirror ball and plastic look. But the brand seems to be very popular, and when Janice messaged me that she had three for me to try, I thought it was an awesome opportunity to try the pens and still maintain deniability. Oh, these pens? Oh no, they're not mine. I'm just holding them for a friend. So join me as I try to review three pens in one video right now. So I'm going to show the parts and features of these pens, I'll show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about these fountain pens. Bennu was founded and is operated by Alex Semanin and Kate Dimitrieva. They were originally located in Russia, but after the Ukrainian invasion, they pulled up their operation and moved to Armenia. The name Bennu is derived from the ancient Egyptian word for the mythical bird Phoenix which dies and is reborn from its own ashes over and over for eternity. Bennu currently has eight different models of fountain pens, three of which we see here. The Talisman, the Euphoria, and the Briolette. All of the Bennu models are made out of a similar cast resin with various embedded, usually flashy and sparkly materials. Some of the finishes actually glow in the dark. The Euphoria and the Talisman are both flat top style, faceted, and sport clips, where the Briolette is a cigar-shaped clipless but faceted pen. Each of the three models have a black plastic cap band with Bennu engraved into the plastic in a curiously Art Deco style of type font. You can see that type font here on the packaging. This is the box that the Talisman came in, and you can see Bennu here in this Art Deco style uh, typeface in foil stamp and when you open the box you get a product information and lifetime warranty pamphlet the pen comes in this cardboard sleeve which also has the foil stamped Bennu and then the box is packed with some paper shredding and you get a single long standard international cartridge and the pen comes with a standard international converter inside let's look at the smallest one first the Briolette this is a finish called Luminous Blue and retails for $105 US. And fun fact, a briolette is a type of gemstone cut that is elongated and pear-shaped. It's luminous because the light areas here glow in the dark in a light blue-green color. Let's turn off the lights and see this luminous blue. And here is the pen in the dark. Very nice. Ooh. Spooky. When sleigh bells ring a ling and kitty singling, it's spooky. spooky. The luminous areas at the tips of the pen fade to jet black in the middle, and the whole thing is sprinkled with silver flecks. The pen is faceted in a triangular pattern, which acts as a roll stop because the pen has no clip. The plastic of all these pens is rather soft and slightly warm to the touch. There's a thin black plastic cap band which has Bennu engraved in it. The cap unscrews with one, two, three full turns to reveal a black plastic section that tapers sharply to a number five size steel Schmidt fine nib and black plastic feed. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that can be removed for cleaning or swapping. This step down from the barrel is very steep and the blocky threads are noticeable, but the section is long enough to be able to grip the pen so you avoid that. The section does get very narrow towards the nib, down to 9.5 millimeters here. The section unscrews to reveal the included standard international converter. And because there's no metal parts here, you can put some silicone grease on these threads and get a whopping 3.5 milliliters of ink capacity using an eyedropper to fill the pen barrel. 
only fill the pen to the bottom of those threads to avoid accidents. The cap has a cap liner on the inside, uh, but it does not post. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough in the hand to write with and very comfortable. But that section's on the small size. For me, I have medium hands. Now let's turn to the Euphoria. This is a much larger pen with flat finials, a clip, and rectangular facets. The facets add some flash to an already very flashy pen. It is 10-sided, which makes it a decagon. They thankfully avoid a lawsuit from Kaweco because, as everyone knows, Kaweco owns the copyright on the octagon. Shh, don't tell Moon Man. This resin is an exclusive finish from Cult Pens called Celebration and retails there for around $125 US. It's a dark blue transparent resin with flecks of sparkly blue, pink, and silver. The cap tapers up to a very wide black plastic cap band with Bennu laser etched into it. The cap band is faceted as well and all the facets line up from one end to the other from the cap over the cap band and through to the barrel. The top finial is glued to the cap, which sandwiches the clip, which extends out from the cap. And the clip is a simple shape that is cantilevered. So you can press on the top just like that, and it opens up like a clothespin. You youngsters won't know what that is. Google it. But it allows you to easily put the pen into your pocket or a sleeve or a notebook uh, with ease with just one hand. I wish more pen makers would do that. There's a small step down to the barrel which tapers all the way down to the end finial which again is flat with a slight dome. The cap unscrews with the now familiar and annoying one, two, three full rotations to reveal the long tapering black plastic section and number six size steel Schmidt nib and black plastic feed. And this nib is medium. Again, the nib unit unscrews for replacement or cleaning. The section unscrews to reveal the same standard international converter and like the Briolette, this pen can be eyedroppered and this will give you a capacity of four full milliliters of ink. Because the barrel is a decagon and the inside of the cap is round, the cap posts deeply but not very securely and any little knock knocks it off because of those vertices on the decagon. It makes it a very long fountain pen anyway. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably, especially with this very long section. The section does taper quite a bit, but it only goes down to 10 millimeters at this end, and there's no sharp step downs or sharp cap threads. And now to the talisman. A talisman is an object that is supposed to carry magical powers. This one is in a finish called Dragon's Blood. The Dragon's Blood Talisman Resin is opaque black with flecks of emerald green and bright red, which Bennu says is infused with actual material drawn from the Dragon Tree, or Dracaena Draco. And that's where the talisman comes into it, as the Dragon Tree is supposed to have magical powers. It is very sparkly, whatever it's infused with. I think it's infused with glee. Let me give you some advice since we're now BFFs. Boys are like lumps of coal. They're dirty and cheap and they get hot when they're rubbed. And some turn into diamonds. But diamonds are a girl's best friend. The body of the talisman is also faceted, but the facets are fascinating facets. The pen is octagonal. Whoops. Shh. Don't tell anybody. But the facets are offset all the way down the pen. So you get it going one direction, then it shifts, goes this direction, then on the cap band it's like a divot and then it goes in this direction and then shifts and then goes in this direction very interesting design and again Bennu is laser etched into the cap band and it has the same clip as the euphoria that is a one hand operation i really like that but different from the euphoria the top finial is dome shaped and the bottom finial has a concave divot and that seam between the cap finial and the cap is barely noticeable as well. The cap unscrews with one, two, and if you guess three, you'd be wrong because it's two and a half. We're getting better. And it reveals a black plastic section identical to the Euphoria and a number six size steel Schmidt nib and black plastic feed. This one is a fine. The section unscrews 
and we see the same standard international converter and this model can be eyedroppered as well with a four milliliter ink capacity this cap also has a cap seal and it does post and it posts a little more securely than the euphoria that's because there are fewer vertices on this barrel and so you can get a better tighter grip on it so if you want to uh, post that pen you can the cap is very light so it doesn't back weight the pen but it does make it very long unposted the pen is very comfortable and plenty long enough and that section does taper down fairly narrowly but again very smooth through the cap threads and so you can back your grip up all these Bennu models seem to have the same nib options fine medium and broad and extra nibs are $25 US this talisman dragon's blood sells for 154 US on the Bennu website now let's look at some size comparisons here are the Bennu talisman euphoria and briolette with a Lamy safari and a pilot metropolitan for scale now let's look at them posted and here they are posted you can see that the talisman posts just slightly better than the euphoria does and the briolette doesn't post at all now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted now let's look at some measurements and i'll be back with some writing samples And we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and let's start with the Bennu Briolette and this is in a finish called luminous blue and it has a number five size steel schmidt fine nib let's check the wetness it's decently wet for a fine nib and there's a good deal of feedback but it is very smooth smooth with feedback and the ink in this pen is colorverse rainy day the nib is fairly stiff but you can get some line variation out of it by pushing it and it makes a 0 0.4 millimeter line which makes it a western extra fine or a Japanese fine nib on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description and for our quote and for some reverse writing yeah it's not doing it at all it's very scratchy and for some quick writing And the feed doesn't have any difficulty keeping up and let's move on to the Bennu euphoria and this is in a finish called celebration and it has a number six size steel Schmidt. this is a medium nib check the wetness this is nicely wet and this is smooth as glass this medium is very nice just a hint of feedback and the ink is pelican golden barrel this nib is pretty stiff 
not much line variation can you get out of it and the line it makes is a 0 0.6 millimeter which makes it a western medium or a Japanese medium to broad and for our quote And for some reverse writing. Much thinner, bit scratcher, but it does work. And some quick writing. Very, very wet pen, no problems. And this is the Bennu Talisman. And this is in Dragon's Blood. And it has a number six size steel Schmidt nib. And this one is a fine. And the ink is from the 2022 Diamine Ink Event Calendar, and it is Diamine Best Wishes. Let's check the wetness here. It is nicely wet, especially for a fine nib. And the nib is smooth. It did take some adjustment because the tines were out of alignment and it has a bit of bite and feedback more like toothy toothiness if that's the word it is now and this nib makes a 0 0.5 millimeter line which makes it a western fine or Japanese medium on my chart and for our quote and for some reverse writing very scratchy it's tearing up the page so I wouldn't do that and for some quick writing No issues whatsoever. Very wet pen. So what do I like and what do I not like about these fountain pens? First, the likes. I like, no, I love the clips. Why doesn't every pen company do this? It's so easy to use. I like the faceted designs and that they change up the pattern from octagons to decagons to these reverse triangles or diamond shapes. The hell with Kuveco. Keep doing it, guys. I like it. And I like that the company is small and innovative. They aren't a large corporation resting on their 80 year old design laurels. I like that they use good nibs, whether you like them or not. Schmidt nibs are not pieces of Schmidt, as two of these pens prove. One of them, not so much. And the sparkly acrylics are something not many other pen makers are doing, at least not specializing in. These designs here will either float your boat or sink in your moat. I don't think there is an in-between with these designs. And things I don't like so much, well, I'm not fond of the plasticky feel of these pens, and they are fingerprint magnets. The Briolette is too small a pen for my liking, and the other two are good-sized pens that don't post too well and are too long when they are posted. They're also very light and tend to skip across your desk if you're not careful. I'm not fond of the thin tapering sections as they get too narrow for my grip. But those are all style and preference things. The pens are well made, and I think they are well worth the roughly $150 US price tag. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Janice Butterworth for the generous loan of these three pens for review. 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote. I made this.